There is a Netflix documentary coming out August 23rd, or so we've heard about Urban Meyer and Tim Tebow's Florida Gators. It's going to be titled Swamp Kings. The reason that we know this is Brandon Seiler was a linebacker on that team. He screenshotted an email that he supposedly got from Netflix saying, hey, go ahead and, and kind of get some promotion going for this documentary. We're going to send you a sweatshirt. Anyway, it, it essentially broke the internet. Like it, it was all that I could think about for the duration of the weekend when I found out that was going to happen. Because we've been clamoring for this for a while. Like People have tweeted about this for a long time. Man, I wonder if we could one day get a documentary about that story. Now, there is a thread on Gators Online from Zach Alberverde talking about this very thing. So if you want inf more information, go get a membership at Gators Online. They're going to keep you in the know. But I just wanted to kind of have a conversation here about things that I hope we see in this documentary. I mean, great documentaries, what do they capture? They capture the inside stuff, right? And the locker rooms, just in general, locker rooms, I believe, are a lot like national parks in the sense that they are one of the last remaining places where camera crews are yet to go. Same thing with, with national parks. Like, you don't go and develop a mall in a national park. Why? Because it's, you know, it's sacred. You don't, you don't go there. Same thing with locker rooms. You don't go in there. Meaning... Everything that happened in that locker room for Florida, all we have to go off of our stories. And it sounds like we got Urban Meyer on the documentary. It sounds like we got Tebow on the documentary. I'm curious to see who else we got on the documentary. But I'm just curious to hear, what was that locker room like, man? Because you had Tebow. You had the Pouncey Twins. You had Aaron Hernandez. A lot of characters that I think probably had some impact on that locker room. I'm just curious to hear what it was like in there. What was the dynamic like? That's one of the top things I want to hear about. Now, in that same vein, Tim Tebow during this time, he was larger than life. Like there's a lot of people that are just a few years younger than me that label themselves Florida fans. Some of them are from like Ohio, some from South Dakota. But the reason why, reason why they're Florida fans is because of what this team did and what Tim Tebow was, not just to college football, but to the entire United States of America. Like, he was so visible and synonymous with college football that it was, it was something that I don't know we've, we've really seen since. The closest thing to it is maybe Johnny Menzel. But you take an icon like that and put him in college. <laughs> you put him in a spot where he's got to go to class and go to practice and be in the locker room with a lot of guys. Like, what was that like? What are the stories we got about Tim Tebow? He was portrayed as just like, a psychopath when it came to working out. What are those workout stories like? He's got some of those in his book. What was he like in the locker room? Like, I think there are some people that have murmured and rumbled about how he was received in that locker room. Because I'll just say this, Tim Tebow, man, from the way that it sounds, and hopefully we get more insight on this in the documentary, from the way that it sounds, he is, how do I say this? Tim Tebow is Tim Tebow. Right? Like, like Tim Tebow is not going to try and bend the knee at all to make you like him more. He's going to be him. And when someone is as assured of themselves as it sounds like Tim Tebow was, some people get rubbed the wrong way by that. Some people don't necessarily like that. It doesn't resonate with everybody. Now, I'm not implying anything. I think there was a podcast actually that had a former Florida player that alluded to this. But I'm just saying, I am very, very curious to hear about how Tim Tebow was in that locker room and just all the stories that I'm sure we're going to get about his time at Florida under Urban Meyer. And that's the last thing here. Urban Meyer somehow, some way, got this team with all of these players with different backgrounds and different ways that they turned out in their time after Florida to go and win multiple national titles. Like, that's saying something. How did this come together? How did you get Aaron Hernandez... Tim Tebow, Riley Cooper, Janoris Jenkins, the Pouncey Twins. How did you get all of those guys with different backgrounds and different just ways that their life went after Florida? How did you get them all to come together and just be a force on the college football landscape? How did that happen? I'm just fascinated by the, by the dynamic, the makeup of how you got this team to win how they won. Because I'll say this, it is so difficult to win a college football game. Like, I didn't play in the SEC. Some of y'all that are new to this show, I played in the Ivy League. I played at Cornell. And it is so difficult to win a college football game. I can't imagine what it's like in the SEC. I can't imagine what it's like to be able to 
push and scratch and claw every single Saturday and be as elite as they were to win a national title. Multiple national titles, mind you. So Swamp Kings, August 23rd, Netflix ain't paying us a dime to talk about this, but for those of us that are college football fans and remember this period of time, to be able to peel back the curtain just a little bit and hear some of those stories that made this whole era what it was, I cannot wait. We get it right before the college football season. It's going to be a good time, man. I bet we'll talk about it as well when it rolls around, but I can't wait. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.